Welcome, dear friends, to a tale of love, betrayal, and the unexpected twists of fate. Enjoy the story! Jack Sullivan's world came crashing down around him the moment he heard the news. He was going to be the father of twins. As he stood in the sterile hospital hallway, the words echoed in his ears, mocking him. He wasn't ready for this. Sure, before Amy got pregnant, they had talked about having kids, made plans even, but now... Congratulations, Mr. Sullivan, the nurse said, her cheerful voice grating on Jack's frayed nerves. You're the future father of two baby boys. Jack forced a smile, but inside he was panicking. Two? How were they supposed to handle two babies? They could barely afford one. Amy had been admitted to the hospital early due to complications, and Jack suddenly found himself free. Free in a way he hadn't been since before he met her. The first day, he moped around their tiny apartment, feeling guilty for not visiting her. He picked up a framed photo of him and Amy on their wedding day. They looked so young, so happy. Where had that couple gone? By the second day, restlessness set in. Jack paced the apartment, his thoughts a jumbled mess of fear and resentment. I should cook something, he muttered to himself, staring at the empty fridge. But cooking had always been Amy's thing. With a sigh, he grabbed his keys. I'll just grab a quick bite at Joe's diner. Little did Jack know that this simple decision would change the course of his life forever. Joe's diner was bustling with the dinner crowd when Jack walked in. The smell of greasy burgers and fries filled the air, a far cry from Amy's health-conscious home cooking. He slid into an empty booth, absent-mindedly flipping through the menu he knew by heart. That's when he saw her. She walked in like she owned the place, all legs and confidence. Her fiery red hair cascaded down her back, drawing every eye in the room, but her piercing green eyes were fixed solely on Jack. With a smile that could melt ice, she sauntered over. This seat taken, handsome? She purred, her voice like honey. Jack's mouth went dry. He tried to speak, but no words came out. He shook his head dumbly. I'm Isabel, she said, extending a perfectly manicured hand. Isabel Reeves. Jack, he replied, taking her hand. The moment their skin touched, he felt a jolt of electricity. Jack Sullivan. They talked for hours about everything and nothing. Jack found himself spilling his guts about Amy, the pregnancy, his fears of fatherhood. Isabel listened with rapt attention, her green eyes never leaving his face. Sounds like you could use a distraction, she said with a wink, her foot brushing against his under the table. Jack knew he should leave, go home, go to the hospital, be with his wife and newborn sons. But as he looked into Isabel's eyes, he felt a pull he couldn't resist. Maybe I could, he said, his voice husky with desire. Before Jack knew what was happening, they were stumbling through his front door, lips locked in a passionate embrace. As they fell onto the bed, the bed he shared with Amy, a small voice in the back of his mind screamed that this was wrong. But Jack silenced it, losing himself in Isabel's intoxicating presence. Jack awoke to the sound of his phone buzzing. Groggily, he reached for it, his head pounding from too much whiskey. The bright screen made him wince as he squinted at the caller ID. Hospital. Hello, he mumbled, his mouth feeling like it was stuffed with cotton. Jack? It's Dr. Thompson. Your wife's asking for you. The twins are doing well, but Amy's been worried sick. You need to get down here now. The events of the previous night came crashing back. Jack sat up with a start, looking around wildly. Isabel was gone, but the lingering scent of her perfume proved it hadn't been a dream. Shit, he muttered. Shit, shit, shit. Jack? Who was calling so early? Isabel's voice drifted in from the kitchen. She appeared in the doorway, wearing nothing but his shirt from the night before, her red hair tousled in a way that made his heart race despite his panic. I... I have to go, Jack stammered, jumping out of bed and pulling on his clothes. My wife? The babies? Isabel's face fell, a flicker of hurt passing through her eyes before being replaced by a cool mask. Oh. Right, your wife. As Jack rushed out the door, Isabel called after him. Call me! But Jack was already gone, his mind reeling. What had he done? How could he face Amy now? 
Jack arrived at the hospital, out of breath and reeking of guilt and stale whiskey. He burst into Amy's room, his hair disheveled and his clothes wrinkled. Jack! Amy cried, reaching for him. Her face was pale and drawn, dark circles under her eyes speaking of a long, difficult labor. Where were you? I was so worried. Jack's heart clenched at the sight of her, sweet, trusting Amy. What had he done? I'm here now, Jack said, taking her hand and trying to ignore the way his stomach churned with guilt. Everything's going to be okay. Hours later, Jack stood by Amy's bedside, looking down at their newborn sons. They were tiny, perfect, and absolutely terrifying. Their little fists waved in the air, soft coos escaping their lips. Aren't they beautiful? Amy whispered, her face glowing with maternal pride despite her exhaustion. What should we name them? Jack nodded, unable to speak. All he could think about was Isabel, waiting for him back at their apartment. What kind of father was he going to be? How about Michael and David? He suggested weakly, the names of his grandfathers coming to mind. Amy beamed. They're perfect. Our little Mike and Dave. As Amy cooed over the babies, Jack felt a wave of nausea wash over him. He excused himself, rushing to the bathroom where he emptied the contents of his stomach. As he rinsed his mouth, he stared at his reflection in the mirror. The man looking back at him was a stranger, a cheater, a liar, a coward. Pull yourself together, he muttered to his reflection. You're a father now. You have responsibilities. But even as he said the words, he knew he wasn't ready for this. Not by a long shot. Over the next week, Jack's life became a blur of midnight feedings, dirty diapers, and stolen moments with Isabel. He felt pulled in two directions, torn between his family and the exciting new world Isabel represented. Amy was a natural mother, handling the twins with ease despite her exhaustion. Jack, on the other hand, felt clumsy and out of place. Every time one of the babies cried, he felt a surge of panic. Shh, it's okay, daddy's here, he would say, bouncing a screaming infant awkwardly. But inside, he was screaming too. What am I doing? I can't be a father. One night, as he lay in bed next to a sleeping Amy, his phone buzzed with a text from Isabel. I miss you. When can I see you again? Jack stared at the message, his mind racing. He couldn't keep living this double life. Something had to give. That's when the idea hit him. His grandfather's old house in the country. It was run down, sure, but it would do. He could send Amy and the babies there, claiming they needed fresh air. He'd say he had to stay behind for work. It was perfect. The next morning, Jack put his plan into action. Honey, he said over breakfast, trying to keep his voice casual as Amy nursed one of the twins. I've been thinking. The boys could use some fresh air. How about you take them to my grandfather's old place in the country for a while? Amy looked up, her brow furrowed. The old farmhouse? Jack, we haven't been there in years. Is it even livable? Jack waved away her concerns, his heart racing. It'll be fine. I'll fix it up a bit before you go. It'll be good for the boys, and you could use the rest. Amy didn't look convinced. She bit her lip, a habit she had when she was worried. What about you? Won't you come with us? I wish I could, Jack lied smoothly, avoiding her eyes. But I've got this big project at work. I can't get away right now, but I'll visit as often as I can, I promise. Amy's face fell, but she nodded. If you think it's best. Jack felt a twinge of guilt, but he pushed it aside. This was for the best, he told himself. Everyone would be happier this way. He'd have time to figure things out, to decide what he really wanted. As he watched Amy tend to the twins, a small voice in the back of his mind whispered that he was making a terrible mistake. But Jack ignored it, already dreaming of his next rendezvous with Isabel. A week later, Jack pulled up in front of the old farmhouse, Amy and the twins in tow. The place looked even more run down than he remembered, weeds choking the front yard and paint peeling from the weathered siding. The porch sagged ominously, and several windows were boarded up. Amy gasped as she got out of the car, clutching one of the twins to her chest. Jack, you can't be serious. We can't stay here. It's not that bad, Jack said, avoiding her eyes as he unloaded their bags. The guilt he'd been suppressing all week threatened to overwhelm him. 
I'll tidy it up a bit before I leave. You'll see, it'll be cozy in no time. But as they stepped inside, even Jack had to admit it was worse than he'd thought. Dust covered every surface, and the musty smell of neglect hung in the air. Cobwebs festooned the corners, and there was a suspicious scurrying sound coming from the kitchen. Amy turned to him, tears in her eyes. Jack, what's really going on? This isn't like you at all. Please, talk to me. For a moment, Jack considered coming clean. The words were on the tip of his tongue. I've met someone else. I'm not ready to be a father. I'm scared. But then he thought of Isabel waiting for him back in the city, of the freedom that awaited him, and his resolve hardened. It's just for a little while, he said, forcing a smile. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a wad of cash. Here's some money for groceries and whatever else you need, and I'll be back to visit soon, I promise. Amy stared at the money, then back at Jack, disbelief written all over her face. You're really going to leave us here, like this? Jack couldn't bear to look at her. He mumbled something about needing to get back for work and practically ran for the door. Jack, wait! Amy called after him, her voice breaking. Please don't do this! But Jack was already in his car. He threw their bags inside, gave her a quick peck on the cheek, and was backing out of the driveway before she could say another word. As he drove away, he caught a glimpse of Amy in his rearview mirror, standing in the overgrown yard with a baby in each arm, looking lost and betrayed. Jack pressed harder on the gas pedal, trying to outrun the guilt that threatened to overwhelm him. It's for the best, he muttered to himself, over and over. It's for the best. But deep down, he knew he was making the biggest mistake of his life. Back in the city, Jack threw himself into his new life with Isabel. They went out to fancy restaurants, stayed up late drinking expensive wine, and spent lazy Sundays in bed. It was everything Jack had ever dreamed of, or so he told himself. Oh, Jack, Isabel purred one evening as they sipped champagne on her balcony. I'm so glad you finally got rid of that ball and chain. You deserve to be happy. Jack forced a smile pushing down the pang of guilt her words provoked. You make me happy, Izzy, he said, pulling her in for a kiss. But as the weeks passed, a nagging feeling began to grow in the pit of his stomach. He found himself thinking of Amy and the twins more and more often. Were they okay? Did they have enough money? Were the babies healthy? One night, as Isabel slept beside him, Jack's phone rang. It was Amy. His heart raced as he answered, stepping out onto the balcony. Jack? Her voice sounded small and far away. The boys are sick. I don't know what to do. Can you come? Jack felt his heart race. He glanced back at Isabel's sleeping form. I, I can't right now, Amy. I'm in the middle of a big project. Can't you take them to a doctor in town? There was a long pause. When Amy spoke again, her voice was cold. I see. Well, don't worry about us. We'll manage. We always do. The line went dead leaving Jack feeling hollow inside. He stared out at the city lights, wondering how he had let things get so out of hand. Jackie? Isabel's sleepy voice called from inside. Come back to bed, baby. Jack took a deep breath, pushing thoughts of Amy and the twins to the back of his mind. This was the life he had chosen. He had to make it work. Amy hung up the phone, fighting back tears. She looked around the dusty, run-down farmhouse, feeling more alone than ever. The twins were fussing in their makeshift cribs, their little faces flushed with fever. Shh, it's okay, she whispered, gathering them both in her arms. Mommy's here. We don't need Daddy. We'll be okay. But even as she said the words, Amy wasn't sure she believed them. How had her life come to this? Abandoned in a dilapidated farmhouse with two sick babies and no help in sight? Suddenly there was a knock at the door. Amy hesitated, then went to answer it, still cradling the twins. On the porch stood a man she'd never seen before, tall and rugged with kind blue eyes and a concerned expression. Hi there, he said with a warm smile. I'm Nathan, your neighbor from down the road. I noticed you moved in a while back but hadn't had a chance to say hello. Everything okay? I heard babies crying. Amy burst into tears the stress of the past weeks finally overwhelming her. To her surprise, Nathan didn't run away. Instead, he
He stepped inside and gently took one of the crying babies from her arms. Shh, there now, he cooed to the infant. Let's see what's troubling you, little one. As Nathan expertly checked the baby's temperature and gently rocked him, Amy felt a wave of relief wash over her. For the first time since Jack had left them here, she didn't feel completely alone. Thank you, she sniffled, wiping her eyes. I'm Amy. These are Michael and David. We've... we've been having a rough time. Nathan's eyes softened with understanding. I can see that. Listen, why don't I take a look at these little guys? I used to be a pediatrician before I moved out here to get away from the rat race. Amy's eyes widened in surprise. A pediatrician? Here? Nathan chuckled. I know, quite a career change. But I needed a simpler life. Now I just tend to my goats and help out where I can. Speaking of which, how about I bring you some fresh goat's milk? It'll be good for you and the babies. As Nathan tended to the twins, Amy felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in weeks. Maybe, just maybe, things would be okay after all. Over the next few months, Nathan became Amy's lifeline. He helped her fix up the old farmhouse, brought fresh milk from his goats, and even found an old crib in his attic for the twins. Amy found herself looking forward to Nathan's daily visits, her heart lifting every time she saw his truck coming down the dusty road. The twins, now six months old, seemed to adore him too, always cooing and reaching for him when he entered the room. One warm afternoon, as Nathan was helping Amy plant a vegetable garden behind the house, she found herself studying his profile. The sun glinted off his sandy hair, and his strong hands worked the soil with practiced ease. She couldn't help but compare him to Jack, where Jack had been all smooth charm and city polish, Nathan was rugged sincerity and quiet strength. Penny for your thoughts? Nathan asked, catching her staring. Amy blushed, looking away quickly. Oh, I was just thinking about how much you've done for us. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Nathan sat back on his heels, wiping his brow with the back of his hand. You don't owe me anything, Amy. That's what neighbors are for. Besides, he added with a grin, those little boys of yours have stolen my heart. It's payment enough to see them growing so strong and happy. Amy felt a warmth spread through her chest that had nothing to do with the summer heat. They love you too, you know. Sometimes I think they're more excited to see you than me. Nathan laughed, a rich, deep sound that made Amy's heart skip a beat. Not possible. You're their whole world, Amy. You're doing an amazing job with them. As they worked side by side in the garden, Amy found herself opening up to Nathan about her relationship with Jack, how he had changed after the twins were born, and how he had ultimately abandoned them here. Nathan listened without judgment, his face clouding with concern and anger on her behalf. When she finished, he reached out and squeezed her hand gently. Amy, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but any man who could leave you and these beautiful boys doesn't deserve you. You're amazing, you know that? The way you've handled all this? You're the strongest person I know. Amy felt a blush creep up her cheeks. For the first time in months, she felt seen, appreciated, and as she looked into Nathan's kind blue eyes, she realized something else. She was falling in love again. Meanwhile, back in the city, Jack's perfect life with Isabel was starting to show cracks. The initial excitement of their affair had worn off, Replaced by the mundane realities of day-to-day -day life, they fought constantly about money, about Jack's long hours at work, about his reluctance to fully commit to their relationship. When are you going to divorce her, Jack? Isabel demanded one night, pacing their luxurious apartment in her silk robe. I'm tired of being your dirty little secret. Jack ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident on his face. He'd lost weight in the past months and dark circles had taken up permanent residence under his eyes. It's complicated, Izzy. There are the kids to think about. Isabel's eyes narrowed dangerously. The kids you abandoned, you mean? Face it, Jack. You're not a father. You're barely even a man. Her words hit Jack like a slap in the face. For the first time, he truly saw himself through someone else's eyes, and he didn't like what he saw. That's not fair, he protested weakly. I send them money. Isabel laughed bitterly. Oh, how generous of you. I'm sure that makes up for not being there for their first words, their first steps. Do you even know what they look like now? 
Jack fell silent, shame washing over him. The truth was, he didn't. In the months since he'd left Amy and the twins at the farmhouse, he'd only made a handful of short, awkward phone calls. Each time he'd promised to visit soon, but something always came up. A work emergency, a weekend getaway with Isabel, a million excuses that sounded hollow even to his own ears. I thought I was getting the man of my dreams, Isabel continued, her voice dripping with disdain. Instead, I got a coward who runs away from his responsibilities. You're pathetic, Jack Sullivan. As Isabel stormed out of the room, slamming the bedroom door behind her, Jack was left alone with his thoughts. He walked to the window, looking out at the glittering city skyline. This was the life he'd chosen, the excitement, the freedom, the passionate woman who'd swept him off his feet. So why did he feel so empty inside? For the first time in months, Jack allowed himself to really think about Amy and the twins. He pictured them in that rundown farmhouse, imagined the boys taking their first toddling steps on the uneven floorboards. A wave of longing washed over him so strong, it nearly brought him to his knees. What have I done? he thought, pressing his forehead against the cool glass of the window. How did I let things get so out of control? That night, as Isabel slept fitfully beside him, Jack made a decision. It was time to face the music. He had to see Amy and the boys, to try and make things right. He didn't know if it was too late, if too much damage had been done, but he had to try. He owed them that much. The next morning, Jack rose early, packing a small bag while Isabel still slept. He left a brief note on the kitchen counter. I need to see my family, I'm sorry, and slipped out of the apartment before he could lose his nerve. The drive to the farmhouse seemed to take forever. As the city gave way to suburbs, then to rolling countryside, Jack's anxiety grew. What would he say to Amy? Would she even want to see him? And the boys? Would they even recognize him? Jack's car kicked up a cloud of dust as he drove down the long driveway to the farmhouse. His heart was pounding in his chest, his palms sweaty on the steering wheel. As he pulled up, he was shocked by what he saw. The old house had been transformed. The yard was neatly mowed, flowers bloomed in window boxes, and he could hear the happy squeals of children playing. Then he saw them. Amy was sitting on a blanket in the yard, looking more beautiful than ever. Her hair was longer than he remembered, sunstreaked and pulled back in a casual ponytail. She was laughing at something, her whole face lit up with joy. The twins, now toddlers, were taking wobbly steps towards a man Jack had never seen before. The man scooped up one of the boys, spinning him around as the child giggled with delight. Jack felt his world tilt on its axis. He stumbled out of the car, his legs feeling like jelly. Amy? he called out, his voice cracking. Amy looked up, her eyes widening in shock. The laughter died on her lips, replaced by a guarded expression that broke Jack's heart. Jack, what are you doing here? The man with the twins looked up, his expression hardening as he realized who Jack was. He set the child down gently and stepped protectively in front of Amy. I, I came to see you and the boys, Jack stammered, taking a hesitant step forward to try and make things right. Amy stood up, brushing grass from her jeans. Her face was a mask of conflicting emotions. Surprise, anger, and something else Jack couldn't quite read. Make things right? Jack, you left us here with nothing. If it wasn't for Nathan. She trailed off, looking at the man beside her with a softness that made Jack's heart ache. I know, Jack said, hanging his head. I was a coward. I made a terrible mistake. But please, Amy, give me another chance. Let me be a father to our sons. Nathan spoke up, his voice calm but firm. I think you need to leave, Jack. You've done enough damage. Jack looked from Nathan to Amy, desperation in his eyes. Amy, please. I still love you. We can start over. Be a family again. Amy was quiet for a long moment, looking between Jack and Nathan. The twins, sensing the tension, had toddled back to her clinging to her legs and regarding Jack with curious, slightly wary expressions. Finally, she spoke, her voice soft but resolute. I'm sorry, Jack, but it's too late. We've moved on. Nathan has been more of a father to the boys in the past few months than you ever were. We're happy here. Please just go. Jack felt as if the ground had opened up beneath him. 
He stumbled back to his car, the sound of his son's laughter ringing in his ears. As he drove away, he caught a glimpse in his rearview mirror of Amy and Nathan's arms, the twins playing at their feet. He had made his choice, and now he had to live with the consequences. Jack drove back to the city, to Isabel and the life he had chosen, knowing that he had lost something precious that he could never get back. Years passed. Jack and Isabel's relationship eventually fell apart, the weight of Jack's guilt and regret too much for them to bear. He threw himself into his work, climbing the corporate ladder but feeling emptier with each passing day. Amy and Nathan got married in a small ceremony on the farm, the twins serving as adorable ring bearers. They had two more children together, creating the big, loving family Amy had always dreamed of. And sometimes, on quiet nights, Jack would find himself driving past that old farmhouse, watching the warm glow of the windows and imagining the life that could have been his. But he never stopped, never knocked on the door. He had made his choice, and now he had to live with it, alone with his regrets and the knowledge that he had thrown away the greatest gift life had ever given him, the love of a good woman and the chance to be a father to two beautiful boys. As he drove away from the farmhouse for the last time, Jack finally understood the true cost of his selfish choices. He had traded a life of love, family, and purpose for a hollow existence of material success and fleeting pleasures. And no amount of money or professional achievements could fill the void left by the family he had abandoned. In the end, Jack Sullivan learned the hardest lesson of all, that sometimes, second chances are just beyond our reach, and the consequences of our actions can echo through a lifetime of regret.